Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll show you how to take MongoDB queries from requests to your Flask app. So this means you can take requests from, say, an API, or you can take them from the front end of your app, whatever you choose to do, but it's basically the same process either way. So to start, I have this collection set up called numbers. It's just a bunch of numbers. That's the name and the digit for the number. Here I have um, a connection to the database, and I'll be using Postman to send posts to this uh, index route. So the very first thing I'll do is connect to the numbers collection, so mongo.db numbers. And I'll have just a generic query, uh, numbers.find. So the first thing I want to do is I want to return the result back to the caller. So to do this, I can't simply return result because result is a cursor. It's not any kind of text I can return. So to convert it into text, which will be a JSON object, I'll use something from the BSON library. So from bson.json underscore util import dumps. So what dumps will do is it will take this result and convert it into a JSON object. And BSUN is included with PyMongo, so if you have PyMongo, you automatically have BSUN. So I'll save that, and I'll go to Postman, and I'll send a request to this route, and it should be a post request. And what I should get in return is all the data from that collection. So let me start up the server, and send the request. And there I have all the numbers that are in my collection, 1 through 10. So now if I want to accept queries, what I'll do is I'll create a JSON object. So I'll go to body and then raw and then JSON. And I'll construct a JSON object that has a query in it. So for query, I'll just use Q for short. And I'll pass some queries. So let's say name is going to be 4. So when I send this over, I want to read it in my Flask app. So I'll do uh, query is going to be requests.json Q, and I'll pass this query directly into find. So I'll save that. And when I run this, I should get just one thing down here from the result, and it should be four. So I'll send it. And you see now I only get the document belonging to uh, the number four. And if I want to do a different query, like say uh, number, and then I'll do a less than query. So let's say number is going to be less than six. If I send this, I should get one through five down here, which I do. Now, if I wanted to do something like sorting, I could do something like this. So I can have a second key in my JSON object and I'll call it S for sort and I'll say descending. So I need to handle that S. So I, one thing I can do is I can say sort equals request.json S and I'll have two options. If sort is descending I'll have that. Well, actually, I'll have this since I have a code there already. If it's ascending, I don't have to do anything because that's the default. And if it's descending, which is the else, we'll just assume that there are only two options. Of course, the user could put whatever they want. But I'll do numbers.find query. And I'll do sort. I'll sort on number. And I'll say pymongo.descending. So I'll save that. So when I send, instead of seeing 1 through 5, I should now see 5 through 1. And I'm thinking my server crashed. Uh, None type object has no attribute select. Oh, I shouldn't have named it sort. Um, sort direction, just to rule out some stuff. So sort direction. I'll save that and I'll restart the server. Okay, let's try this. 
and global name Python is not defined. Oh, that should be Pi Mongo, not Python. All right, so let me try that again. And server is restarting. Did it crash? No. My server always takes a while to restart. But anyway, now that I have the result, I see now five, four, three, two, and one. So it's descending. If I did it the other way, ascending, I get one through five again. And it's analogous for things like limit or any other um, qualifiers you want to put on your query. So this is just a basic introduction to accepting queries from uh, either a user or some kind of automated process like um, something consuming your API. But it's pretty easy to do in PyMongo because PyMongo is basically just JSON objects. So it's pretty easy to convert a JSON object from a request to a query in a PyMongo database, which then gets converted back into a JSON object as a result. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about uh, sending queries through um, requests in Flask and PyMongo, just let me know. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.